All right, everybody, welcome uh, to the Coin Geek show here today. We've got John Albanese of CAC Grading. John, thanks for joining us today. Oh, pleasure. And uh, today we've got a specific topic to start with, which is uh, CAC just announced, and I will say CAC Grading just announced a plus designation and a legacy designation. And so, John, I'll be honest with you on this one. Um, the first thing is, it's going to be hard for me to remember what I'm talking about, CAC or CAC sure. grading. Sure. I, I found this to be difficult when I when I look at things to say, wait a second, I'm talking about two different entities here. So sure. I'll, I'll try to keep it straight and try to listen well. What uh, What's the backstory on uh, on the PLUS designation and CAC's policies and then CAC grading policies? Right. Well, first of all, it's, it seems to me that the, the, the new lingo seems to be CACG. Um, yeah. My marketing guy has a problem with that, so we haven't been using that in our marketing, but people are going to call it whatever they want to call it. Just like you know, we're not, I'm sure we're not excited presenting a $100,000 coin and calling it a slab, but guess what? Yeah. That's just, we have to live with it, right? So I've, yeah. if you want to refer to it, that that's fine. I mean, some people say CAC stickering, and but but in either case, yeah, as far as the plus goes, as you know, um, we, we we put out a bulletin, pretty sure it was back in 2010. Right, that when NGC and PCGS uh, presented a joint press release, that they were start plusing coins. Right at that point, we decided um, not to recognize it. So, in other words, you know, 1928 piece dollar and 64 plus came in for stickering, and we thought it was a nice 64, a solid 64. We would sticker it, and you know, maybe the next coin could have been a 64 plus. We may have agreed with it. We still stickered it. We gave it the same weight. We didn't really. You ignored we, the plus. We we, yeah, we ignored it, and as we stated, we've ignored it for, you know, for the last I guess um, that was 2010. So quite a while, you know, for 13 yeah. years. Now that and, and again, I'm not I'm not a big fan of the plus personally because I've always argued um, that there were too many grades, right? And because there are too many grades just one through 70 without the plus, it seemed to me to be difficult to be, to be consistent to be in. And I just, I just felt that, um, you know, back in the olden days, you know, I, when I worked in a coin shop, a silver dollar was unk. It was choice. It was gem. It was superb. Yeah. Right? It was, and, and quite a few collectors understood that and it kept them active in the hobby because they knew what they were looking at. They, you know, they were looking at the same thing that the dealer was. They saw things the same. And I think that increased participation, now that we slice and dice it, we give it a 61 through 69, uh, it's much more difficult to for the, the average collector who is not a professional grader um, to actually get it. So now, basically, they have to trust the dealer, and and that's fine. Um, however, I think I think it, it I think it lowers participation. People become disenfranchised, and um, so. And not to mention, it puts a lot of stress on the graders to be consistent. And I'm sure, Ben, you and I could sit there looking at a bunch of 84 CC dollars graded 61 or 62 and put 100 coins in each pile and try to decide which is a one and which is a two and then mix them up. It's kind of hard to do. This, with is, a coin, right? this is just the world according to Ben. I, I, I know we're too far down the rabbit right. hole to go back to where we've been. I prefer the verbal. I really right. prefer right. Um, choice gem superb because you know it's more of the concept of the beauty of the coin and it's not so you know the engineering mind is like well this is definitely this and it's definitely that and it's right. definitely this everything's black and white and coins are not black and white to me there's always been more of an art artistry and a beauty right. Right. to not only the coins but the grading of the coins and so right. i've always enjoyed when i'm able to look at something and just say yeah that's uncirculated oh that's choice no that's right. gem Right. It feels more authentic to me, but I think, you know, we're, we're 30 years past that point. So, right, right we are. But, you know, so I still, I still have the mindset when I look at a, a coin pondering a sticker as a 65, I still ask myself, is this a gem? Is right. this, a, I still think gem. If it's a 67, I still think superb. 63, I still think choice. So those are, to me, those are the, the main grades. Once in a while, you got a coin that's superb, but off the charts, right? Call that 
68 or 69. I understand that, you know, but, but, um, so, so in any case, the fact that I always felt we had too many grades, now we're adding the plus. So essentially, we're basically doubling it, right? From right. <laughs> making it impossible to be 100% consistent. Now we're doubling it, making it doubly impossible. So that's why we didn't embrace it. And so with, with the new CAC, in Virginia Beach, CACG, as we could say, um, you know, we we felt that we had to adopt the plus because it's it's now ingrained in the market, and if we didn't if we didn't accept the plus, we felt that our our better coins and our holders, our sixty five holders, our gems would be cherry picked and they would be called plus elsewhere. So we really didn't want we didn't want our our the coins extant on the marketplace to be cherry picked. So that's why. We decided to go with the plus, and sort of like, sort of had two rough decisions to make, and we picked, we picked, you know, we picked the plus because the markets adopted it, right? So, this is interesting, yeah, because you know, I I haven't sat in your chair and tried to figure out all the details and thought through all the things, but it's interesting. I hadn't really considered the fact that after CACG gets rolling, there's going to be a push for some people to pick the coins and get them into a possibly higher grade at a different company. I didn't even really consider that, which is, you know, my naivete, I guess. Well, they, well Ben, they call it arbitrage. They, they gave it a nice Wall Street lingo name. Yeah. It's it's cracking out holders to maximize the, the grade, you know. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, this will, this will be interesting. So, so um, y- you guys will be plussing coins. Correct. And um, CAC will still be stickering, ignoring the plus? Correct. Right. Okay. And does the plus, is the plus, should in your mind, should the plus be considered like a half grade or is it an eye appeal? I know that NGC has the star. I don't think PCGS does. But so to you, is the plus something that is just nicer for the for the grade or is it like a half grade how do you verbalize well, I, that? I think it's higher than a half grade i think to me a 65b coin or, or b plus is a half grade i'm thinking of it as an a coin i guess i hate to put a decimal point on it because it's because no, that helps me that helps me understand yeah it, it's more like thinking of a coin that's like so close right to the next level but it's technically not there right so it'd be like a sixty-five point eight, or you know, just I'm I'm trying to just understand the process sure. Sure. when a coin pluses or when it doesn't, right. what it means. Because it's been interesting to me, like you, you know, that that plus has been around since twenty ten, and early on the market didn't embrace it. In other words, anytime I saw a plus coin, it was basically like an extra ten bucks. It was not, you know, a sixty-four really? plus was nowhere near the price of a sixty-five, especially if there was a big jump. And still today, there's there's more value in pluses, but it's still not really, you know, right. 65. It's still just a 64 plus. Right. I think yeah, I think the plus thing I, I agree with you is on the coin it has a big spread. So you take a, you know, an 1885 CC dollar between 65, 64 and 65, not a very big spread. A 64 plus doesn't really get you very much. Right. But if let's just say there are no 68s. And you have a sixty-seven plus. You could argue you have the finest known, right? And then right. there, it brings a lot of money. And I think, and also the registry, the registry uh, competitive situation too. For those guys, you know, a plus can mean having the third best set or the second best set. So that also as a driver of the plus. Yeah. Uh, as yeah, well, the registry sets have done a lot for that. I mean, in general, yeah. For driving yeah the market. I guess I'd say. Yeah, so, but uh, and you guys have your own registry set set up. Is that coming down the pipe too? Well, we're we're working on it currently. It's um, it was a major software task just getting the CAC grading going. It's been uh, over a year, and and we are currently working on the registry. It's it's quite complicated, but we're working on. It. Yeah, yeah, right. right. I, yeah. I'm, I'm laughing because I'm thinking, yeah, you know, it's definitely complicated. Because I don't understand what the registry sets as is. They assign number values to things that seem somewhat arbitrary to me. But, you know, I don't know if they have an algorithm that creates those numbers or if it's just somebody who's decided. So, Oh, no. Well, it's an algorithm. But like I said, it's um, we're, we're putting a lot of thought into it. I think, you know, I think we're going to reward coins 
that are historically more important mm -hmm. uh, than the other services have. I think, you know, for example, and I don't have the data in front of me, but uh, I do believe a so-called finest known 62D quarter, Washington quarter, <laughs> has a higher value than an MS65 1932D quarter, which to my, you know, some of my age, that's that's absurd, you know. And I think, I think what you know we're going to do is we're going to balance that out a bit, because we're going to yeah. we're going to look at the importance of that coin in lower grades to give it more registry meaning, as opposed to, you know, when we were kids, a 62D quarter Oof. in any it was basically something we put in a bag of silver. It was so, in your hand, right? So, right. well, you yeah. know, it's hard. Yeah, the mid-century modern stuff. And the other problem with that is there's a really good chance someone's going to get more in that grade eventually. Well, there could, yeah. In my yeah, mind. Sure, I, I agree. And, you know, but someone says to me, I had to find a 62D quarter and I paid what, whatever, $30,000 for it. Rather than me saying I'm impressed, I just walk away saying, well, I, I feel sorry for him. You know, I, I feel bad for him. Buy a 32D, you know. Yeah. Well, there, there, there's a whole lot of there's a whole lot of value thought processes that we all go through when we look at things because I, I do that all the time with coins like you have this but you could have had two of those right right like it, it struck me this this last weekend I saw a guy who had a had a pocket and you know 20 and yet another guy had two 1793 half cents au 58 ms 60. Two, and I was surprised to find out that you could have owned three of those half cents for the price of the pocket. And I'm like, right. I think I would have taken the half cents. That's just me. Right. Though. Everyone's got their own yeah. thing. Well, but but at least at least you're talking about at least you're talking about your argument is about about great coins on both sides. Right. But but I but my argument, and I've written this in Maurice Rose's newsletter several times, which boggles my mind that the finest known 1954 Lincoln is more valuable than the finest known. 1854 large cent so that's like extreme example right so yeah that's to me that's just mind-boggling so yeah yeah well let's see so so tell me more about this uh tell me about this legacy issue designation that's coming out this is going to be for uh cacg am i right all yes, right for explain, that, explain this legacy announcement here all right, so this is for coins that have been great, stickered at CACG between November of 2007, since our inception, approximately that time, until June 5th this year. I think that might be yesterday. I'm not sure. It's right around here. So, and, and the point is, the whole point of the legacy is, like, I had made promises to many, many collectors that I've spoken to that have, that have significant money, value in coins, and their feeling was, like, yeah, you know, that they they trusted CAC, they trusted the brand, they trusted the process. They're paying a lot of money for coins, big premiums. And how do I know it's not going to get diluted in the future, as they feel some of the other coins have? And so it's just it's just a promise to them saying, well, you know, your coin was great at this time, and you know, I'm accountable for it, I'm responsible, and you know, going forward, going forward, um, just as we have our new team on the ground, which is. John Butler, Ron Javuski, and Bill Shamhart, they're the finalizers in Virginia Beach. That's their own legacy as well. And they're going to be held accountable. And they have to, you know, and again, I have their feet to the fire. And basically, if if they do a good job, which I believe they will, their coins will trade alongside of the legacy coins. Now, there might be a legacy premium because people want something different. But the fact is, it's keeping people accountable, holding them accountable, and they're they're happy to step up to the challenge, and and quite frankly, when and I've mentioned, and there'll be, there'll be more coming about about legacy later on. But um, you know, keep in mind, we're sharing the same grading sets, we're collaborating with the same grading team. So the grading standards in Virginia Beach will be the same as they are here in, in New Jersey. Uh, but also going forward, when the last member of that team retires, this is further out. There'll be more more education about this is that they're establishing a legacy two team so really if there's a change in the finalization process maybe in 2035 that new team will be held accountable because there will be a new label signifying that you know it there's a change in there's a change in the finalizers and yeah. and we and, and and we'll keep their feet to the fire as well to hold their standards up to legacy two so, so let I, I think I need to add one important piece of information to this conversation that we may have glossed over. 
What we're talking about is if somebody wants to take a coin and cross it over. Correct. Right? A coin that is already stickered by CAC. Right. And they want to cross it over to CACG. Then what will happen is because you guys have a database of when everything was graded based on the serial number on the, whether it's an NGC or PCGS, you'll have the serial number in your database. If it comes into crossover for CACG, then if if it falls in that time frame, will it automatically get the the L designation? Yeah. Yes. Legacy, um, which is probably the best way to do things the easiest because, I, in my mind, I was like, you could do a whole different label, but then again, I understand that that's a process thing for you guys, which would be very difficult to just stop but, the presses. Let's do a different label. Right. First, but not just the process, but it's just going to be a small L because again, we 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 don't want to. We we really want to de-emphasize it because it's not as though oh gee I have a legacy coin it's worth double we don't want it to be that way it's not it's not special it's just factual not special at all that legacy coin should look just like the non-legacy it's it's just factual it's just a promise to our earlier collectors and and it's just holding the current grading team which I'll be a part of accountable for our be for our behavior it's just it's a matter of we are doing everything possible, again, with our extensive grading sets, everything possible, humanly possible, to prevent this sort of bracket creep or gradeflation uh, poisoning the system. So we want to do everything we can humanly possible to, uh, to to prevent that. Yeah. Well, and so with the with the grading, let me see here. So just, just to also unpack a couple of things for someone who's watching and hasn't seen any of the videos on these concepts. For uh, the new CACG, you guys will not be putting CAC stickers on any of those holders, right? Correct. They will not. Like they're they're not um, eligible for stickers. Correct. And you will be, of course, still stickering uh, coins and other holders. Um, and your crossover policy will be for PCGS and NGC only. Yes, correct. And. Um, this is just a concept that I know you probably already booted to the curb a few times, but have you considered looking at Annex soapbox holders? In other words, defining, because for my, my feeling in the marketplace has been that the older Annex soapbox holders actually have a pretty decent amount of respect mm -hmm. and the ability to be, I, me personally, I've, I would love to see some of the old soapbox holders eligible for crossover or stickering right. although they're too small to put a sticker on but right well yeah so I, just so you know like i we, we've explored that and i, I did look at a, quite a few annex coins be, before we considered it and it at the time it seemed that like maybe it was just that group but they seem to be pretty well picked over but i gotta tell you there are a lot of annex fans out there and, and i understand because i i think the holders really need myself they they would prefer we not cross them because they really want the nicer index coins to stay in those holders. They really don't right. they don't want that to be cherry picked. So should maybe like be careful what you wish for. Um, yeah. But it's something it's it's not a, it's not a definite no. It's something that we'll explore in the future. I it, I don't think it helps that there's no barcode on the holder for automation. But but like yeah. I said, I mean, would you be happy as an index fan, a soapbox fan? Would you be happy? having the best third of those coins cherry picked. And then what are you left with? I don't know if you'd be happy. Yeah, with that. It's hard because, you know, this gets back to the concept of collecting holders versus coins, which is a, a large part of the marketplace right now. Right. So, and I don't know how to read barcodes. They have a real fine barcode on them there. I don't know what, what it means. Oh, is, that, but, is, that, is that an older there or is that a new holder? No, this is the old soapbox. This little guy. Right. Oh, I think that's the, is that the real tiny holder? Yeah. Yeah. These are the smaller ones. Oh, it looks pretty big from here. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, next to an NGC holder, right? Oh, okay. All right, I get it. Yeah. So, but now some of their earlier holders might not have that barcode. And by the way, you know, speaking of technology, I understand if what what we're really talking about is their barcode might not mean anything currently. It may not be plugged into an API or something that it needs to be plugged into. I don't know. Okay. Yeah. You, but you want to have to create. <laughs> Anyway, it's not a definite no. It's a no for now, yeah. but not a definite. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Understood. Yeah, I know. I, I appreciate the fact that you guys are willing to look into the marketplace and see how people are collecting and what they're collecting and give it consideration. Sure. 
And then also, anytime you come to a decision on something, you send an email out to people, which I think is very helpful and 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 be very clear about this is what we're doing. And um, it, it's a it's a good it's a good process. So um, tell me how if I can, how's the uh, how's the soft launch working? How's it going? You getting some bugs out and stuff? Well, we the, the software, uh, you know, fortunately it works. We're, we're we're pounding it through it today here at CAC, and so far we haven't had any bugs. It's been we've been testing it for about a month. So it, it appears though it appears as though sometime early next week we'll be actually encapsulating the first coin in Virginia Beach. Nice, that's pretty exciting. Yeah. Now you're going to have a real big ceremony for that, or it's going to be a lot of not no, here. No, we've. You know, we're so busy and we're so I know. exhausted that I'm not in the mood to have a party at the moment. Maybe in three years we'll do something. No, no. I listen. I mean, that's something else that I think I can uh, relate to and appreciate. It's it, you know, it's a very blue collar approach of, all right, we got work to do, guys. Let's go take care of yeah. it. Yeah, we're not. We're not. Believe me, we're, I'm not celebrating at all. I'd be mean, maybe in maybe in three years I'll be able to smile, but we have a lot of work ahead of us. Yeah. Well, it, yeah, I, I understand that. I mean, it looks like it's just. When you actually stop and think about how much work is going to go into the process of actually creating a new grading company, mm -hmm. you know that's that's a long, that's a sure. lot. It's yeah, it's it's just a lot. So, all right. Well, you know, I appreciate your time. I know you're a busy guy. Anything else that we need to know about that's happening with uh, either CAC or CACG that's uh, coming down the pipe that we should know about? Well, we we're probably going to pivot on a decision that we made a few days ago and. The decision was that if if one has a CAC coin, stickered coin, and they sent it to Virginia Beach to get the legacy designation, that we were not going to give it the legacy if we plussed it. And uh, it seems like on our forum, we've had I, I, this morning. I woke up to 130 unread messages, and the collectors seem to be overwhelmingly against that. They they feel that's punitive, and many of them feel that you know, gee, I bought all these coins and I paid big premiums for them and why should we yeah. be penalized? So it looks like to me, you're the first one to hear it officially that we are gonna we are gonna pivot on that. Right yeah. now we're we're crafting a press release um apologizing to our members for confusing them, but we've decided to reverse direction and uh and honor the plus uh for legacy coins. Yeah. Well that's good. That's good. And you know it's once again you know, the ability to actually know that you listen to feedback to me is somewhat sure. encouraging because uh, anytime you deal with something that's kind of in a marketplace, sometimes yeah. it's really hard to feel like you have any right. access to anyone who has any say. Yeah. And well, so I, would, I, would blame, I would blame on hubris on our part. And I could tell you but a strong advocate that was against our earlier policy was my software developer who's a coin collector. And for weeks, he's been telling me we're making a mistake and we're making a mistake. And I kept telling him why we had to do it this way. And he was right. And uh, and the collectors have spoken. And, you know, we're going to listen to the collector. Yeah, that's good. That's good. One one more thing about the CAC, the uh, crossover. If a coin is holdered with a gold sticker, how does that work when it comes into CAC grading, CACG? Well, right. It'll be at least the next highest grade and it will earn a legacy. Yeah. Although I've I've told many collectors that it's to me that's financially a backwards move. Like it's I think the gold sticker is worth more as it is, as it sits today, personally, you know. Correct. I mean, you know, when when it's all said and done, there's there's this marketplace is so how would I put it? It, it multi-leveled with the fact that people collect holders. Sure. And and so it's very difficult to understand where everything will end up. Um, but yeah, absolutely. I, I can see your point of view. I think is correct that you know people will prefer that coin and that holder with the with mm -hmm. the gold sticker on it. You know, it just seems to me like because eventually, in my mind, there's going to be fewer and fewer gold stickers going out the door. Yeah, because there's only so many coins that are already graded that you know. Sure. And we've also raised the price of that, as you know, it's for CAC stickering. Um, you really to to de-emphasize stickering. So as the prices yeah. are high stickering, we'll, we will hopefully get fewer coins. Yeah. Well, and, and to that point, I was stunned when I found out uh, that for collectors, 
you would look at coins and only charge them if you stickered them. And I, I, I was really stunned to find that out because yeah. that gives no incentive for the collector to do any due diligence on the quality of the coins. Yeah. Right. I know. So yeah. I, I had a group of coins that I sent off solely because of value. Right. Like, These are expensive coins. I'm just going to send them in. I, I wasn't picky. Right. But the other side of it is we've sent coins in that we were picky on and we did much better. And for us, that makes sense because I've been getting charged on every coin I'm sending in. And I tell my customers, we're going to get charged for these coins no matter what. So let's be picky. You right. can't just say, oh, this is worth more with a sticker. Let's just send it in. I'm like, well, right. you got to be able to look at the coin. Yeah. And that, and again, that, that cost us millions of dollars over the last 15 years. And um, I was happy to do it at the time, but it just got to the point where we just got deluged with coins and but I mean, but on the other hand, I also find it was learning as well for the collector because, first of all, you're mentioning that they should be pickier. But keep in mind, many collectors just don't, they don't know how to grade, so they have no idea, right? So they might send in a, a coin that's bright white and beautiful, but baking soda, they might think it's PQ. So right. they they don't know, Bennett. And a lot of collectors would learn from it because they would tell me they sent ten coins in that should sticker and ten that shouldn't, and they felt. They felt positive that the coins that didn't sticker did not sticker. They they felt that was their learning. It was a learning process, but we just couldn't handle it here any longer. We had to we had we had to, you know, surrender to that. Yeah, well, it's a difficult thing. I mean, I you know when you're in a, anything with customer service and dealing with other people, you know, I find it hard here to understand fully. Yeah, uh, you know, where where the doors, where the gates are for me, because right you know, the demand level changes over time and you're like, okay, wait a second. I don't know that I can do X, Y, and Z anymore because I, I have other things that I'm obligated to, you know? Right. So, and, and so I understand your perspective of just that feeling of, well, I want to be able to do this for the hobby and the collectors, but at right. the same time, I only have so much time in the day. Right. There's, yeah. There's only one of you, right? Yeah. So very good. Very good, sir. Well, I appreciate, I appreciate the time and the clarification. And uh, good times lying ahead, and hopefully everything will, will go really well for you guys. Thanks, Ben. I appreciate it. Yeah, yeah. All right. John Albany's All right. people. All right, everyone. Take care. Thanks.